Okay, uh, so this is our second video uh, on population. This is going to deal with a couple of case studies that are linked to that key term up there, overpopulation. When the size of the population of a country is larger than the amount of resources available. So what you have then is the idea of population management. And that's the key term that will be in your case study question, in your population and settlement question. If your case study is about population management, it's about what's a country done to take control of its population, either increase its population, we haven't looked at that, or decrease its population because it's heading towards that scenario. So the first of your two uh, examples that you may have is Thailand. I'm going to quickly run through this um, because I don't think it's in your case to the booklet. I think we just gave you one. So if you, if you get completely stuck with China, remember that how they controlled their population in Thailand was they promoted economic growth, okay? That's what they wanted. Uh, and the fact that more people are living in cities, especially in Bangkok. So people who live in cities need less children because uh, living con conditions can be uh, often crowded and unhealthy, okay? So they went down the line of, if you live in a city, we encourage you not to have lots of children uh, because otherwise you'll live in cramped conditions. Also, by increasing economic growth, they provided opportunities for people uh, and therefore those people earned money with their new jobs that were created, therefore they didn't wish to spend money on having large families. And economic growth also sees improvements in healthcare, so therefore people who are having children and you reduce the infant mortality, so there's a reduced risk of children dying before the age of one, the more children that survive, the less people then go on to have further children in the future. Okay, so that is one thing that Thailand did for economic growth. The other thing that they did was being the increase in the use of, con uh, of contraception. And that was through that popular, if you remember it from the lessons, cabbages and condom scheme. Okay, breaking down the barrier of using contraception. Okay, and obviously that altered the birth rate because more people were using contraception because they were given away free uh, in a, a restaurant in Bangkok. Okay, uh, every time you had a bowl of cabbage soup. I think that was the idea, okay? You got a free condom, or you just took them away at the end of your meal. Either way, it was breaking down barriers, okay? So that increased use of contraception, then meant that obviously more people were using them, that reduced the birth rate, and also the increase in contraception has impacted on the spread of HIV and AIDS. So actually, it's controlled the, the population a bit more because it's brought down the death rate as well, um, and it's made people more aware of the importance of using those, okay? So the cabinet condom scheme is one way of changing attitudes over the use of contraception and then subsequently along with economic development managing the population of a country okay so that's that was a small one obviously for population management the biggie is china and the one child policy okay so what you tend to be asked okay is um, how it was carried out, so what were the features of the scheme, and then how successful it was, okay, like what impact has it had. So, features of the scheme, okay, were to encourage people to have just one child because of rapid population growth, okay. Uh, it was aimed at reducing rapidly, population, rapidly growing population and therefore potential problems such as food shortages, and it was introduced in the late 1970s, in 1979, okay? So they carried it out by a combination of laws. They made it the law that you could only have one child, okay? Uh, excuse me, if you had more than one child, then obviously you would be fine, or you might even end up going uh, to prison, okay? They uh, encouraged people to have one child because they would get reduced taxes, okay? So they gave tax breaks almost or reduced taxes to people who only had one child and those people got access to better health care and standards of education for their one child that they have. Parents who refused were fined and made to pay for their child's education and health, um, whereas, as we said, those who do accept the policy receive many benefits, okay? So we've got that. So those are the features. That's the how. That's the how they put the policy into place, how they got people to do it, made it law, gave them sort of uh, lower taxes, charged lower taxes, and then gave them better quality access to better quality health care and standards of education. Has it been successful? Well, yes, because it has reduced China's population growth, but China's population is still growing. So it's successful because it brought down the growth rate, but it hasn't actually stopped China's population growing. Okay, So really, that's the only success part of it, Yeah, that it brought down the growth rate. It didn't stop the population growing, remember that. 
Other problems are, you end up with, and this is where you get specific place detailing, something called the 4 2 one policy. So you end up with one child from the one child policy supporting two parents and then four grandchildren. Okay, So that one child wage, when they grow up and they start working, they're having to support six people before they even thought about getting married and having children of their own. Okay, So you've got extra burden on that one child as that child gets over. Um, single children may face social interaction problems when they grow up because there's no sort of sibling interaction. Um, you might end up with like increased mental uh, health problems and therefore a strain on healthcare to try and cope with that. Uh, Chinese couples often prefer boys to girls, resulting in selective termination and even sales of baby girls uh, within China. Okay, um, so actually they had a problem whereby you know a lot of female babies were either given away or um, ended up being um, terminated before they were actually born and then the result is that 30 million more boys than girls are being created so therefore a, a phenomenon known as spare branches okay you will have a large segment of the Chinese population which grows up um, without being able to find a female partner because there are more boys than girls okay so in terms of has it been successful it has created a number of problems and that's the specific place detail that you would need to get into your answer okay for a country you have studied where population management has been introduced um, explain how the population explain how the population management strategy is being carried out and evaluate its success okay there you go